Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. So today I'm going to be doing some healthy meal prep for the week ahead. I'm going to start out with some Instant Pot beef stock. Uh, I always like to keep a bag of veggie scraps and um, chicken and beef bones uh, separately, obviously, in my freezer to make stock when I get enough to do that. And my favorite way to make it is in the Instant Pot. So I just have some olive oil in the bottom I let that get hot on the saute function and this was actually um, a pretty large beef bone that I had cut out of an arm roast I think it was um, earlier last month and so I'm just gonna saute that in the instant pot with some salt and pepper and some of my new fresh jacks spices I'll talk a little bit more about those later and then I had a bag full of veggie scraps so in there is celery carrots onions parsley and peppers and I just keep that in the freezer and keep adding veggie scraps to it um, week by week and when it gets full enough I will make stock out of it. So I just put the beef and the veggie scraps, salt, pepper, um, actually added some peppercorns, some garlic, a few bay leaves, and um, just pour water over to cover it. And then you can go ahead and put the lid on, set it to sealing, and I cook it on high pressure for 60 minutes. Um, once it's done, you wanna let it do a natural pressure release for probably 20 minutes because the Instant Pot is really full. Once that is done doing that natural pressure release, you can go ahead and flip the valve and just let it steam off. It'll probably take about five minutes to do that and I just used a towel to make sure that it didn't spray on my cabinets. Here is what that beef stock looks like when it is all cooked up. Obviously you need to strain everything out and so I just have one of my strainers over a large roasting pan and I do this in the sink to make sure that it doesn't splatter everywhere. And then I'm just pouring that broth down into the strainer and letting um, the broth drip down into the roasting pan. I'm gonna put the strainer back over the Instant Pot insert just to catch any remaining broth and then I let that sit on the counter for about 30 minutes um, so it cooled off just a little bit. I like to use a glass measuring cup with a handle to fill up my jars. So I like to save um, like spaghetti sauce jars and fruit jars, anything that I can wash and reuse. I like to do that for my stock. I also use ball jars too. So I'll just go ahead and fill those up. I like to leave about an inch and a half of air at the top because I will freeze these. And yes, you can freeze stuff in jars. You just have to be really careful that you leave enough room in the top for it to expand. And then these can be used throughout the month for different soup recipes and things like that. So on this particular day, on the weekend, I was going to make some vegetable beef soup for dinner. And so with the remainder of the broth, I just poured that back into the Instant Pot for later use. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna work on is for some breakfast meal prep, and this is just for my husband and I. The kids probably will not eat this, but this is a crustless quiche recipe that I got some time ago on epicurious.com. I'll post a link to the recipe down below, but I haven't made this in a while and was looking through my recipe binder and decided I had everything in the refrigerator to make it this weekend, and so I decided to do it. Also, my Instant Pot was being used uh, for the stock and I couldn't make my egg bites, so you know work with what you have. So in a skillet, I added a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm chopping up about a half a red pepper really fine and adding that to the skillet along with a couple green onions. I will saute that on medium heat on the stove until the veggies get soft. And then I will dice up about a quarter pound of deli ham. This is just a regular smoked ham that I got at the deli counter when I did my grocery shopping this weekend. I will add that to the skillet along with the peppers and onions and just let that saute until the veggies are soft. Okay, so while I'm letting the ham and veggies cool a little bit, I'm going to melt a tablespoon of butter in an eight by eight glass baking dish and then sprinkle about a couple tablespoons of breadcrumbs on the bottom. This will help the quiche to keep from sticking. I'm also going to grate up one block of Swiss cheese. This is eight ounces, so it's about two cups 
of shredded Swiss cheese. Whenever I'm making like a homemade recipe like this, I always just like to grate my own cheese. It's your personal preference if you wanted to buy it pre-grated. I put the meat and the veggie mixture in the bottom of the dish and then the cheese on top. And then I will go ahead and mix up my egg mixture to pour on top of that. So this is a great recipe to make ahead because it reheats really well in the microwave. I like to just take it to work and stick it on a paper plate and heat it up for about a minute. Um, I also wanted to mention that if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, I'll put my name up on the screen here. It's just Jen Chapin and I always have a link in my description box. I post a lot of uh, real-time updates over there about what we're eating and what we're doing and like previews of videos so I would love to have you guys follow me over there as well so in this um, measuring cup I'm just whisking together five eggs with a cup of half and half and a cup of milk and some pepper you don't need to add any salt because you have a lot of cheese in this recipe pour the egg mixture over the meat and cheese and then you can pop that into the oven to bake I ended up having to bake this for a little bit longer. Um, it's at 425 for 30 minutes. I think I left it in for about 35 minutes. You just want to make sure that it's cooked through. And this does have more of like a custard consistency rather than like a really dense quiche. So just keep that in mind and it will continue to cook a little bit as it sits. But once it's cool, I just cut it into six pieces and I'll put these all together in a, um, a dish and take that to work. Like I said, I do keep like a stock of paper plates and um, forks and napkins and stuff at work. So all I have to do is just take one of these pieces out, stick it on a paper plate, warm it up, and I have my breakfast all ready to go. The next thing that I'm going to work on is a meal prep for a Thai cucumber salad. I'm going to serve this this week along with some chicken curry that I'm going to make. And when you are planning out your meals for the week, you may not be able to do all of the meal prep in advance, but you can definitely meal prep components. Like for example, this cucumber salad, I obviously don't want to mix it up like three days in advance because the cucumbers would get really soggy and it just wouldn't taste good. But what I'm going to do is mix the dressing up separately and then keep the cucumbers separate that way the night that we're going to eat it I can just combine the dressing with the cucumbers for four so for the dressing you'll need a third of a cup of rice vinegar two tablespoons of sugar a half a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil some red pepper flakes and some salt and I will post this uh, recipe link down below as well unfortunately we haven't eaten this yet and so I can't tell you if we liked it or not but I will uh, be sure to leave an update in the comments if we like this I think it'll be really good I, I did taste the dressing and I thought it was good the kids probably won't eat this because it will be a little bit spicy from the red pepper flakes but they might try it who knows so I am cutting up up four of the mini seedless cucumbers. I get these at Aldi every week. I love them. I just slice those up into coins and I'm putting them in a glass dish. The other ingredients that you will need are some chopped green onions. So I'm just slicing those up and putting them on top of the cucumber. And then the last ingredient is just a quarter cup of chopped peanuts. These are just some regular salted dry roasted peanuts that I got at Aldi. I'm not going to mix these in with the veggies quite yet because I feel like the nuts might get a little bit soggy. So I'm going to put these in a separate little um, dressing container and that way I can just mix it fresh um, when I'm making the dish. So I'll just put the nuts in with the veggies, stick the lid on and put it with the dressing and that is ready to go for later in the week. Um, another thing that I'm going to make this week is some chicken curry. This is actually a vegetarian recipe, but I'm going to modify it and add chicken. So I'll link that recipe down below. But I am using about three uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And anytime I do like a stir fry or a curry dish, I always like to prep the components the weekend ahead. It just makes it so much easier to put it together on the weeknights. So I'm just cutting up this chicken into um, smallish chunks. And and I will put that in a Ziploc bag and leave it in the refrigerator until it is time to make it that week. Uh, the recipe also calls for some chopped veggies. So I'm using one red pepper and I'm just chopping that into large chunks. And then I'm also going to use one yellow pepper and one onion. I threw it on the floor, obviously, <laughs> so I'll have to get that. But um, I just I don't want to chop these into too small of chunks because um, 
you know, I want to still be able to like taste them when I'm eating the curry. So uh, this is something that you can do with any stir fry, you know, chop your veggies up ahead of time, just throw them in a Ziploc bag. And then all you have to do during the week is heat your pan up with some oil and throw them in there and toss everything together, add your stir fry sauce. It's super easy and it is a great time saver. I'm going to put all of those chopped up veggies into my Ziploc bag and that will be ready to go. I do get questions sometimes on the chef's knife that I use. Um, I will link it in the description box below if you guys are interested. It is pricey, but if you take care of your chef's knives, um, they'll last you forever and it's honestly probably the most indispensable kitchen tool that you can have. All right, so next I'm gonna prep some lo mein noodles. Now, I've never actually made these at home before. My kids really love to get like plain lo mein noodles when we go either out for to like an Asian restaurant or even like to Panda Express, they love to get the plain lo mein noodles. So I thought it would be fun to try making these at home. This recipe is from Pinch of Yum and I will link it down below. I'm gonna do the same thing with this, basically just make the sauce ahead of time. And I'm also gonna boil up some ramen noodles. I went ahead and discarded the spice packs and I'm just going to boil the ramen per the package directions. Um, this said four minutes and so I went ahead and boiled it for four minutes and then I will rinse them in cold water so that the noodles don't stick together. And then um, the dressing that you saw me making or the sauce rather has three tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame oil, and one teaspoon of sugar. So I'm just going to rinse these, make sure that they are all cool so they don't stick together. And then I'll pop these into a Ziploc bag and add just a little drizzle of olive oil so that they don't stick. And then all I have to do during the week is just pop these in a skillet with some um, oil and fry them up and then add the sauce and then that will be ready to go. last thing that I'm going to do for these noodles is just chop up a few green onions and put those in a separate Ziploc bag. I'll go ahead and saute those with the noodles and the sauce when the time comes to make dinner. So along with those lo mein noodles, I thought it would be good to make some um, peanut sauce chicken skewers. So why I am making this actually is because you can see that bottle of Trader Joe's spicy peanut vinaigrette there. That was actually about ready to outdate and I had it in my refrigerator. I just didn't have the chance to use it all. So I was thinking when I was doing my meal planning this weekend, I was like, how can I use this up? And I thought, well, I can use it for a marinade because it's spicy and it's delicious. And I think it would be really good to marinate chicken with. So I just have some metal skewers. I am threading my chicken strips onto that and just seasoning those with a little bit of salt. I'll pour that dressing down. Um, over the skewers and then I'll go ahead and work on my next layer. I would recommend investing in some metal skewers if you make things like this often. Um, I do have wooden skewers also but sometimes they break off um, and splinter in your food and that's not good especially when you're dealing with kids and you know they're just like eating stuff right off the skewer is just not not a great idea so I would recommend the metal skewers they work great on the grill also in the summer months so I'm just kind of um, making sure that all the pieces are covered and I'll pop that in the fridge to marinate for a day before I make dinner next I'm going to work on some spicy soy salmon this isn't really a recipe it's just something that um, I'm kind of just seasoning with the ingredients that I have in my fridge so I have a piece of salmon I'm putting that on some parchment paper I'm going to season it with some soy sauce, some sesame oil, a little bit of fish sauce, and some olive oil. I am also going to use some red pepper flake, and then I'm using this citrus pepper spice blend from Fresh Jacks. If you guys haven't checked them out before, they are a spice company who contacted me to send me um, five spice blends, and I'm using them in this week's meal prep. I have loved them all. They have great quality stuff. I'll leave a link to their site down below along with a discount code that you guys can use if you're interested. And even if you're not interested in buying anything, they have a great Instagram feed that you can check out for recipes. So 
Along with the salmon, I'm going to make some honey glazed carrots. So I actually got this roasting sauce at Aldi um, about a month ago and I've had it in my fridge ever since and haven't used it yet. I thought it would be great to make this with the salmon. So I'm just putting some baby carrots on my sheet tray along with some chopped up green onions. I'm going to chop up about a quarter of a red pepper and put that on the sheet tray as well and then just use my hands to mix that roasting sauce with the carrots. If you wanted to make something similar, I would just Google a recipe for like honey roasted carrots or something. I'm sure you'll find something similar, but I thought this would go really good with that spicy salmon and um, they did turn out really delicious. So I will roast those at 375 for about 25 minutes. I think I cooked the salmon at 425 for about 18 minutes. Um, it just depends on how done you want your salmon. And then I will split that filet into two portions and put them in some glass meal prep containers along with the carrots. This will make a really good uh, couple lunches for me to eat this week. I'm really, or I shouldn't say I'm the only one. My kids like salmon too, but Adam doesn't really care for it. So these will definitely be my lunches for the week, which is fine. Um, but these will go into the fridge after I am done garnishing them with some green onion. Here's a look at the finished product. I am super excited to eat these for lunch this week. And when I am excited about my lunches, it just makes it more likely that I won't eat something unhealthy in the cafeteria at work. So the next thing that I'm going to do is prep some broccoli for a dinner one night this week. I actually got these broccoli crowns at Aldi and they were like super like limp and just not looking at their prime. So what I like to do when I get vegetables like this, even lettuce or anything like that, is just soak it in super, super cold water. So I'm using my OXO salad spinner. I'll leave a link to that down below. I know a bunch of you guys have got it, have purchased it from Amazon already, but I definitely use it in my meal preps each week. I just soak that in really cold water for about 20 minutes and it does help perk up the veggies a little bit. So um, one of the last things that I'm going to work on is some tabbouleh. If I'm not saying that right, please tell me. I don't want to be, um, you know, someone who pronounces things wrong, but I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it's basically like a cucumber and tomato and onion and parsley salad with bulgur wheat. I found this at Hy-Vee. It is kind of hard to find in my area. That's one of the things that frustrates me about living in the Midwest is some of these specialty ingredients that I'm looking for are just so hard to find around here, around here and it's super frustrating. But I did find that bulgur wheat at Hy-Vee. Um, you don't necessarily have to cook that, but you just soak it in boiling water. And I will post this recipe link down below if you're interested. Um, next, I'll mix up the dressing. So I'm just squeezing some lemon juice into a measuring cup and then I'll add some olive oil um, I do really love this juicer that I have it does both lemons and limes I'll link it down below on Amazon it's pretty inexpensive and it works great um, to the lemon juice and olive oil I am adding some salt and pepper and a little bit of cumin and I'm actually using one of my electric uh, frothers to mix that up. That's a great way to use your milk frother is to make dressing with it. Um, I'll try to find the one that I have on Amazon and link it down below, but it is a great way to use that. So also for the salad, you'll need some chopped up cucumbers and some chopped up tomatoes. So I'll go ahead and get those chopped up and put them in the bowl while the bulgur wheat is soaking. Uh, the inspiration for what I'm going to make with these is like some snack boxes, which you'll see here in a little bit. But if you're familiar with the Iowa City area, we do have a restaurant called Oasis and they have like really, um, authentic food like pitas and hummus and tabbouleh and baba ganoush and just all kinds of like awesome awesome food and they sell these snack boxes um both at um like local grocery stores and at the hospital cafeteria and stuff like that and they come with like pitas and hummus and this tabbouleh and it's just so delicious and i was like you know what i should make these at home it's it's like a really simple thing to make actually so to the um salad I'm gonna go ahead and add some chopped green onion I also have my bulgur that is all cooked up so I'm adding that and the next thing that you want to do is just chop up some fresh mint and some fresh parsley and add that along with the dressing and stir everything up um, this really gets better as it sits and 
as it sits in the refrigerator for a couple days, the flavor will just get better and better. So I'm using about two bunches of parsley. The recipe calls for two cups. I went ahead and trimmed the stems off, but those won't go to waste. I have a, another veggie scrap bag in the freezer that I'm working on. So I'll go ahead and put those in there and save them for a later use with stock chopping up the parsley and putting that in the bowl and then I'm just going to give that a good mix along with the dressing and just taste it to see if it needs salt or pepper or anything else. Just in case you're wondering, I do um, taste my food with the spoon that I'm stirring my stuff with and then I put it back in the bowl. Um, <laughs> I've gotten a few comments on this and you know what, uh, we're all friends and family here so that's just how I do it. But obviously if I was making food for someone else, I would not do that. Um, anyway, next I'm going to make some homemade hummus. This is actually a recipe that came out of, I think it was Cook's Country Magazine. They are the people that do America's Test Kitchen and they have great, great recipes. If I can't find it online, I'll type it out in the description box below. But this is a hummus recipe that I have making, have been making, I'm sorry, for years and years. It's from actually a 2012 issue of this magazine and it's super simple. All you need is water, lemon juice, some tahini, which is sesame seed paste, some olive oil, one can of chickpeas, garlic, salt, cumin, and a pinch of cayenne pepper. So essentially what you'll do is just put the chickpeas, garlic, salt, cumin, and cayenne in your food processor and just process those until they are coarsely ground up. And then you'll add the rest of your ingredients through the top of the food processor while it's still running. Um, I'm not sure what it is about this hummus, but it just comes out so like super creamy and smooth. Um, I have made a lot of different hummus recipes and honestly, this is the best one that I have found that has like really good flavor um, and texture as well. So I did think that it needed a little bit more lemon juice after I tasted it. So I just added that and processed it up. Here is what it looks like when it's all done. Um, it is really, really delicious and I'm looking forward to eating it this week. So like I said, the inspiration for this was just to make like some bento slash snack boxes. And this is actually a great vegan recipe as well because there's no animal products in this. I have these divided uh, glass lunch containers from Amazon. I will link those in the description box below and I'm putting the tabbouleh in one section of those and then in another section I'm spooning some hummus into there. Um, if I was making more of these I probably would have doubled the hummus recipe. Um, but I wasn't, so this worked out just fine. I'm also using some of the Fresh Jack's Greek seasoning, which works really, really well sprinkled on top of the hummus. It's super delicious. And then I have some of these um, mini naan breads from Aldi that I'm just cutting up into little squares and packing them along with the hummus so that I can eat that all together. So I'm super excited to eat these this week. Um, it's sort of, sometimes I feel like it seems kind of tedious to put all this stuff together, but if you're excited about your food and it's going to help you eat healthier, then I really do think it's worth it. So here's a look at those containers. Uh, like I said, we're really looking forward to those this week and I hope you guys try them too. So the last thing that I'm going to work on is just prepping up some strawberries. My kids love strawberries and it's always a struggle in the winter time because we just don't have um, good strawberries here in the Midwest, obviously in the winter time. Um, but I do, I have had luck finding them at Aldi and Hy-Vee. So I had two um, one pound boxes of strawberries that I wanted to prep up for my kids this week. I went ahead and soaked those in my OXO salad spinner with a little bit of vinegar and then I'm just using a paring knife to cut those up and put them in a Tupperware. These honestly will literally last like one or two days in my house. My kids will eat through them like no one's business and they will be gone, but that's fine. I'm totally great with them uh, eating fruit whenever they want to. <music>
Okay, so that concludes our meal prep for this weekend. Here is a look at everything that I got done. So I have my lo mein noodles all ready to go along with my chopped up green onions and the sauce that goes with those. So that will be super quick to put together this week. I also have my peppers and onions and chicken cubed up for my chicken curry. My chicken satay skewers, they are marinating. I will make those the following day for supper. And I'll also make some steamed broccoli along with that. Here are the strawberries that literally lasted one day in my house, so those are gone already. <laughs> the crustless quiche with the ham and Swiss that I cooked up I'll have for breakfast. Here were the uh, bento style boxes that I made with the tabbouleh salad, the homemade hummus and non bread. And I also had a little bit extra salad, which I just put in a separate container. Here are my jars of beef stock. Those will go into the freezer for later use. My honey sesame glazed carrots along with the soy or the spicy soy salmon. And then my Thai cucumber salad, which is all ready to be assembled later in the week. So that is it for this week's meal prep. Um, I do try really hard to link all of the recipes and cooking products that I use in the description box below. But if I miss something, please leave a comment and I will add that. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your kind comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye.